Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 95. Are you ready to join the clan? Today we have Ross Jeffries. He works with a hand-picked selection of high-powered entrepreneurs, sales people and other professionals to teach them his unique one of a kind under the rider persuasion blueprint. Hello Ross. Well, good morning, good afternoon. I'm here in San Diego, California, so I don't know what time it is there in the UK. So I guess it's late afternoon, early evening. Yes, we are in the early evening. Evening is at 10 past 5. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I know the clan is anxious to hear your story, so let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about your background, what you did before you started your new online business, which is sales now? Yes, I have a very unusual <laughs> background. Uh, as you may know, my other career, which I'm still doing for the past 30 years, is taking men who are shy and backwards and don't understand how to be charming and showing them how to be charming with women and get dates and find girlfriends and that sort of thing. So that has been my mission and continues to be my mission. Uh, and my statement is this, is you can take a guy who's never had a date in his life, a long time singleton, as you guys call them in, in the UK, and you can show them how to move up a learning curve of lots of rejection and not take it personally, and teach them how to be charming and even persuasive with women, then I can take a salesperson who's got any reasonable form of success and, and train them how to keep a, a positive mindset and how to be persuasive. So. That's my background. I'm also a master hypnotist and a trainer in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which is the study of how language structures consciousness and shapes our decisions and drives our behavior. Wow. That's a great uh, device, really background. Why, do, <laughs> yeah. why did you change into now uh, to internet and you left your certain years of uh, helping men to find their dreams partners? Why do you do well, what you do? First of all, I'm still helping men. I haven't stopped doing that. Uh, that's, that's not stopped. You know what I found is a lot of students would come back to me over the years and say, use your stuff, found a great girlfriend, I'm engaged, got, got married, whatever it is. But they'd say to me, you know, I've used it for business. It's just, it's doubled my business. It's made it so much easier for me to persuade and convince people. I said, hmm, maybe I have a new career here. And, you know, when you do the same thing for 30 years, even though you're passionately in love with it, you start to think, maybe I should branch out. So that's how I, I got to do that. And also understand, I've always done my own marketing and copywriting. I've always written all my own material. I figure I've got the skills. Let's go do this. Wow. Does that make sense? Wow. You are, you are really talented. Do you think anyone can be, um, can be like what you are doing, be uh, teaching men how to find their dream pattern? Can anybody do it? I don't think so. No, I think it takes a special kind of cat to wow. be able to make that kind of transition. I don't know if that's the answer that you or your audience wants to hear. Now, can can some people do it? Sure, if they get right the right kind of guidance. Is it easy? No. Is it doable? Yes. Does it bring rewards? Of course it does. So I think there's a certain mindset and a big portion of what I teach is mindset that you have to be willing to deal with uh, uncertainty and you have to be able to deal with getting knocked back on your butt, your bum, as you say there over in England. <laughs> but uh, a lot of people can do it. Not everyone can do it. I can't lie about it I'm, or I'm choosing not to lie about it. That would be nice if I did. You have to understand also I'm drawing on 30 years of experience to turn around and, and make this transition. And also, here's the other thing. A lot of people in the business world who I talk to secretly, at least the men, secretly are fans of mine. 
they don't want it to ever get out that they were ever nerds who couldn't talk to women. So they keep my tapes and videos and such in their closet, so to speak, or on their hard drive hidden away. But a lot of them are already fans of mine. I have a pretty unique background. I'm something of a celebrity in that, in that first profession. Wow. Well, they want to keep refreshing their mind. That's very nice. Okay. What is the false profession of ignorance? Oh, very, very good. So when you go in to do sales or any kind of marketing or presentation, you don't want people to get the perception that you, or you don't want to come off as a know-it-all, as someone who's arrogant or um, pushy or, or I think you guys call it toffee-nosed. Is that what the Brits call it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to come off like that. So the false profession of ignorance is a way of saying that you don't, uh, if, for example, I wanted to influence you and have you think that you wanted to hire me, I wouldn't say, I know that I'm the best. I would use that phrase to embed some suggestions. I would say, you know, as we're talking together, patients, I don't know at which point you'll find yourself thinking, hmm, this Ross is an interesting dude. Maybe there's something here you want to learn about. But as that's taking place, I just want to say I'm humbled to be the person who's guiding you today in your learning experience. <laughs> uh. Now, I just embedded all sorts of suggestions, all sorts of commands for you to think in your mind that you want to hire me. But I didn't say it directly. I said, you know, as we're sharing this this learning today, I don't know at which point you'll stop and find yourself thinking, gosh, Ross is fascinating. I want to learn more with him today. So I'm actually telling you how to think. I'm telling you to think Ross is fascinating. I want to learn more from him. But I'm embedding it in a language structure where you can't tell what's actually going on. And what makes it possible is that false profession of ignorance. Another one would be I can't tell. You know, I can't tell at which points you'll stop and find yourself thinking Ross is so fascinating. Wow. Um, I hope he doesn't have a girlfriend. I want to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. <clears throat> Do you have any mentors in your satires, in, uh profession, in the, your old job and your new job? Do you ever have sure. mentors and coaches? Oh, yes. I believe everyone should have a coach. I have a fantastic business coach. She's amazing. I couldn't be around without her. The other person I have who knows a lot about marketing works on my team. He's my operations manager, Adam. When it comes to copywriting, you know, writing your own ads, I learned everything I know from my mentor, Gary Halbert. I couldn't have made a penny in this business without Gary. So absolutely, you can't. no one achieves anything of really great value on their own. You always have to have team behind you. Always have team behind you. And being able, you know, the saying that if you want something and you visualize it and you work really hard and have a passion, do what you love and the money will come. That's not true. You better do what you love, make good decisions and have a great team around you <laughs> and be willing to take the shots that life will hand you. It's just how it works. Now, teaching that mindset is something that I have a unique skill in doing, <laughs> because, again, if you think about it, take a singleton who's never had a date in his life. He's 30 years old. Imagine moving him through all that pain and fear and depression and getting him to be successful in such a difficult area of life. I can do that job. So I think that makes me uniquely qualified to show people in business how to keep that mindset going and, and not fall on their bum the first time or second or even 10th time something doesn't go the way they want. Uh, just to give you an example and be transparent, I had two major setbacks this month, two opportunities to speak, which I love to do, uh, and they both fell through. And I was really upset about it for four or five days. And then I'm just now shaking myself off and saying, okay, mm -hmm. those are opportunities. That's, that's fine. There'll be more. I'll create more. What choice do I want to make here? And I'm making the choice to move forward. Wow. How do, how do professionals like you overcome those prospectors' objections? 
Oh, well, I view objections as just a request for help. Yeah. You have to understand something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, you have to understand. There's no such thing as objections. There are only, there's only requests for help and the prospect showing you that they want you to help them make a good decision. Here's a little bit of information that I'll give to anyone who's listening to this. And I don't know who your audience is. Uh, are they people who do business online? Who is your audience? Yes, the people who are starting to do business online, those who are thinking, oh, should I start? Should I wait? What is your advice? Well, my first little piece of understanding I want to give anyone who's trying to sell anyone anything anywhere whether it's online or real estate or professional services or whatever, you're not selling your product or service. You're selling decisions and good feelings about decisions. This is crucial to understand. You are not selling your product or service. You're selling decisions and good feelings about decisions. If you can make that distinction in your mind and really get it and really understand it, then you'll have a, as we say in America, a leg up on everybody else. You'll have an advantage. So you've got to get that mindset down. You've really got to get that mindset. That's the first thing. The second thing is get a good coach. I have a coach for my business. I would not be in business without my coach. So you've got to have coaching. You've got to have guidance. You've got to have support of a group. Do not try to go it alone. There's just so many pitfalls uh, and you may as well learn from other people's understandings rather than try to do it all on your own. How did, let's put man aside because you are already in business for the last 30 years and now you just started your new uh, sales business. How did you know you are successful? How do I know I'm successful in what, dear? In your new business, in your sales my profession. Clients, yes. Because my clients are getting results. <laughs> If the client doesn't get results, then all you're doing is, is filling their head with information. There's a difference in information and skill. So you can fill your head with information but not build the skills. So through the work I'm doing with them, depending on the team, I have a team of people who are doing nothing. They have no leadership. They have no organization. I can't help them. I have another team that I work with who's doing great but because they have leadership and organization and someone who's telling these people, look, you've got to study what Ross is giving you to study. I can't just take the information I know and download it into someone's head. If I knew how to do that, I could make a fortune. <laughs> wow. What is one thing that has contributed to your success so far? I feel that I have a mission in life. I have a mission in life to heal and to get people past their blocks and barriers and to see to it that they're more successful. It's just a mission, particularly with my first job, which is helping men. I know what that pain is like to not be touched by a woman, to not have a girlfriend or a spouse. I know that pain intimately. And so I swore if I ever figured out any answers, I'd share those answers with as many people as I can. What are some of the biggest mistakes professionals make when it is time to make the pitch or get the signature on the bottom line? Oh, well, the first mistake they make is, again, they don't have that recognition or realization that they're not selling their product or service. <laughs> they're, they're, they are selling decisions and good feelings about decisions. The next one I would say is they're being... They go back and forth either between being too pushy or being too timid. One of the things I say is don't insist, but don't back down. So a lot of people who are really good in all the different fails of phases of, excuse me, not failed, all the different stages of selling, when it comes time to close the deal, suddenly they get nervous or they get anxious. Now the thing is, is if you get anxious or nervous, probably your prospect is going to get anxious or nervous. There's something, you know what the term empathy is? Oh, if you can uh, let us know, because we might be getting from a different... Well, empathy is, empathy is when you're actually feeling what the other person is feeling. Sympathy means you feel for them, but empathy means you're actually feeling the same feelings that they're feeling. 
And the problem with that is if they start getting, if you have empathy for your client, it could ruin your sale because if they start feeling nervous or doubtful, you'll start feeling nervous or doubtful and you won't know why. You'll think it's because there's something going wrong, but in reality, you're just feeling with what your what your client is feeling. So empathy can ruin a sale. The next mistake they make is they fail to set up the state of mind they want their prospect to be in when they're doing the presentation. So they're assuming the prospect comes to them with a blank slate. Your prospect does not come to you with a blank slate. They come to you with all their sadnesses, their fears, their confusions. They're not looking at you through a, a clean window. They're looking at you through the window of being unfocused. Um, think about this. Nowadays, people just don't have the attention span that they used to. I don't know what part of London you're in. Are you in London? I am in London. All right. So how many times during your day, patients, today, <laughs> did you see people walking around with their faces glued to their cell phones? <laughs> A few, because sometimes they don't even see where they are going. It's just all on the phones. Yes, we are okay. all. I am there. I'm guilty of that as well. Uh, okay, we all are guilty of that. But the problem is, it's giving the whole society ADD, attention deficit disorder. I would say it's giving everyone sales atten attention deficit disorder, marketing attention deficit disorder. It used to be that you could hold people's attention for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Now people's attention span, I think, has gone down to two minutes. So even if your prospect wants to listen to you, you better grab their attention really quickly and know how to keep them in a focused state. How do you keep them continuing to focus on you throughout your presentation? Because you don't know how to do that. Even if they were originally interested, their mind's going to wander. And we don't, and you can't walk up to your prospect and say, now, Mr. Smith, you're going to continue to focus in like a laser beam on every word I say throughout the entire presentation. I don't think that's going to happen. Because when you tell people directly, they're going to laugh at you. But if I were to say, patients, if I were to say, you know, patients, as we continue to talk today, I'm not sure at which points in the conversation you'll find yourself developing a real natural focus that lets you think, well, I really want to pay attention, patients, but as that's taking place, I'm happy to be sharing this experience with you, and I feel humbled to be your guide today. That's what I want. I want you to be focused. It's the first step. So assuming that your prospect is coming to you uh, as a blank slate, it's a pretty bad assumption, and right? it's almost okay. certainly wrong. And then the final thing is you just have the wrong idea about how important any particular sale is. I say that in a breakfast of bacon, uh, I say that you should be interested in the sale, but invested in your skills. In a breakfast of bacon and eggs, the pig is invested and the chicken is interested. <laughs> So uh, that's a metaphor that I used to teach. Wow. I think you understand what I'm talking about here. Yes, wow. Hmm. It's very deep. Okay. What is the most valuable thing your mentor has told you? My mentors? Your mentor, your coach. Oh, my mentor, her name is Kelly. Kelly has taught me it's a difficult lesson for me is to be consistent. You can't just uh, have a spurt of work one day and then, do nothing for two days. You have to be consistent and you have to consistently offer value to your audience. Nowadays, connection is the new currency. Having your tribe connected to you is the new currency. And so that's what I would say. What is the process language? How do you use this to become a questionable authority in your audience or prospect world? Okay, process language is what I've been using with you. It's language that's very vague. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so let's say I wanted to give a talk, a speech, all right? Okay. I would say, you know, before, I would say something like, like, before I get going today, leading you in this discovery of these amazing principles, principles of persuasion, I just want to say, I don't know at which point you'll find yourself growing more and more interested in this presentation, but as that's taking place, please, may I ask a favor? Will you promise me you'll share the questions that naturally come up when a great learning is taking place? 
Now, I didn't say anything directly. I didn't say anything specific. And when you're vague like that, it requires that the other person go inside their imagination and imagine for themselves, find for themselves the meaning that you want them to find. I don't know if that made any sense, but when I did that little bit of process language, was I telling you what to pay attention to or when to pay attention? Was no, I? No. It was a bit, a bit no. aware. Okay. But, hold on. This is really important. But, but it sounded to you, it sounded to you like it made sense, even though I didn't say anything specific. Yes. So, therefore, you have to fill in the blanks. <laughs> If you're too specific right away, if you're too specific right away, then your audience will get bored. Ah, you need to keep them guessing and marrying. Okay. So, Ross, tell us about your consult, uh, consult Ross, uh, dot com sales killers. Tell us more about that. Oh, that is a free video course. It's very short on one of the top things that salespeople do that just kills and annihilates the sale. And it's absolutely free. You go to consultross.com slash sales killers. There's nothing to buy. I'm assuming you'll put a link on the podcast so people yes. can, can go there, but it's sales killers, S A L E S K I L L E R S. So go ahead and you can watch that course. It, it's short. It may, it's under, I think nine minutes. I know people have small attention spans. <laughs> okay, what should, what should we expect from uh, consult roles? What would, what clients clientele are you taking on? Are you taking on the new newbie online? Are you taking on the one who are already established or the ones who are already making 1 million and up? What is your clientele? I'm, I'm, well, the truth of the matter is I'm taking people who are established and are making good money. I don't, my time is extremely valuable and I don't have time to take people who, who just aren't, who are still struggling. But if you've got high net worth and you already have a prosperous business, then go to consultross.com slash apply. And then you can apply for a consult. I go through each application. I hand read every app. Well, not by hand. I personally read every application. And then if I feel we might make a good match, what I'll do is email you, personally email you a link where you can get on my calendar and we can talk about whether we're a good fit to work together. Again, I only work with high net worth, like successful individuals and businesses. And even then I'm very selective because I just have only limited amount, limited amounts of time to take on clients. Okay. Where do we find you to connect with you? I know we can go to that uh, website, but is there any place we can find you? You can find me on Twitter. My Twitter is at Ross Jeffries, R-O-S-S, -S, and then J-E-F-F-R-I-E-S. That's my Twitter. Okay, so client, there will be more from Ross in a moment. If you are finding Ross's journey interesting and you are ready to hear more, come and listen to the full version of the interview at onlinesuccessjourney.com. If you are on online already, click on part two of Ross's journey and you'll get lots of tips to help you with your own business and how to move forward and have a mindset. And don't forget, you can also access all other online success journey interview podcasts on the site as well. That's a wrap, client. Remember, success is a journey, patience and rose. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to part one and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com. Filled with even more success tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun, there are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey Clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast, and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to OnlineSuccessJourney.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path. 
so make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form. By clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on Ratings and Reviews, then write a review. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.